Jing, I've been joined in the studio. I mentioned to you earlier, Osman Ayaga, he's the Deputy National Youth Organiser of the NDC. Uh, Osman, you were there. Um, our cameras captured you a number of times in, during the demonstration. Do you think that this demonstration uh, has drummed home your concerns? Looking at the numbers. Yes, thank you very much. And I would want to congratulate all 16 regions, mm. especially the NDC, mm. who were able to organize mammoth demonstrations across all 16 regions. Mm. And uh, if you look at the outpour of people, mm -hmm. those who were not even NDC members, mm -hmm. who came out in their numbers mm. to register their displeasure, it clearly tells you that a good number of people in this country mm -hmm. believe that the direction in which the electoral commissioner is headed is the wrong direction and ought to listen to the hue and cry of the people of this country. So for me and for us in the NDC, we want to congratulate every person who came out who defied all odds, whether mm. your job, your personal issues, whatever mm. plans you had today, mm. to come out and join this mom of demonstration to register or to make your voice known and to also be heard that this was your position so far as the electoral mm. register mm. was concerned. Mm. As for the numbers, the numbers speak for themselves. I have never seen or heard of any political party organize demonstrations in all 16 regions the same day. I've never. This is the first of its kind. This is the first of its kind. So as for the numbers and to talk about the success of the demonstration, mm. the numbers and the success of this demonstration speaks for itself. And mm. people can see, those who are watching can see, those who can also hear to have heard. So mm. as for the success, it has been a success. And as our national chairman said, this is the first. Mm. We hope that the electoral commissioner will listen to us mm. and proceed to organize or pr produce an independent forensic audit of the register. Otherwise, today we have produced 16 petitions. Mm. Otherwise, they will receive 276 petitions. Mm. That is the promise we're making to the EC. We hope we don't have to get to petitioning 276, but we just hope that we can end at 16 petitions and the EC will do the rightful thing. Mm. Uh, now, now um, you have made certain demands. Yes. What are these demands? You say the EC should correct uh, the unauthorized transfers. Yes, first and foremost, um, pay the petition. There are about um, seven demands. And with your permission, let me just read so that I don't um, wrongly paraphrase some of them. Number one, permit an independent forensic audit of the voters register and its IT systems. That is number one. Number two, convince stakeholders for collaboration. And in these stakeholders, we spoke about stakeholders such as international stakeholders, we spoke about ECOWAS, we spoke about AU, etc., etc. Mm. Number three, agree to publish the findings of the forensic audit. Mm. Because we don't expect you to have a forensic audit and at the end of the day, you say NDC was wrong. If we are wrong, we expect you to come out and tell the entire public that NDC was wrong, mm. that we are ready for it. Mm. So we expect the EC to publish but, but the, the EC forensic audit. Well, it has corrected those anomalies. Four, raised. four. I'll come to that. Four, re-exhibit the voters' register after the forensic audit. Mm. Five, review and correct all unauthorized transfers. Mm -hmm. Six, adopt a revised timeline for electoral activities. Mm. Seven, institute accountability and integrity measures so far as the mm. register is concerned. We have brought quite a number. So you're making number. seven demands? Yes, seven demands okay. per our petition. Mm. We have taken the first group of issues mm. to the EC. Mm. And remember, when we spoke about some of these abnormalities, so far as transfers were concerned, deleting of people's names from the resource concern, the EC vowed and stood on its grounds that everything the NDC was saying was wrong. Until we proved to the EC, in fact, they said that it was impossible for transfers to be made without mm -hmm. the notice or the permission mm -hmm. of, or the collaboration of the persons that they have been transferred. Then we proved to the electoral commission that here it is. Some names have actually been transferred. Some names, in fact, in Pusiga, in Tamale, North, Tamale South, names have been transferred to Pusiga, about 38 names. You talk about um, constituencies such as Ejumaku constituency, where about 3,000 names have been deleted from the register. The same thing, you talk about uh, Ewutu Senya is where about 128 names are no more found in the register. Mm -hmm. You talk about uh, Yellow Krobo. So you realize that the issues 
transcend across constituencies. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about Pusiga or Ejimako. So we then tell you the AC that beyond Pusiga, we need to further open up the register and have a comprehensive audit, forensic audit of the register. Because what we are seeing is beyond just the 38 names in Pusiga. And we have the proof. So we do not also believe mm -hmm. that you being the EC and currently the custodian of this register, and you are actually a corporate, so far as this mismanagement of the register is concerned, mm. we do not have any more trust in the EC that if we simply hand over our concerns to you, all these concerns can be corrected. That's why we are calling for a stakeholder's platform. Mm. We're calling for a forensic audit so that every stakeholder, every actor in this election, be it MPP, be it NDC, be it CPP, be it APC, be it the EC themselves, independent bodies, let's sit together, bring your representatives, then we can look into the register one after the other so it can all be corrected at once so we all can agree. But, but, we all can but, have but, a consensus but, 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 but as to the register the, we're the, taking the into the elections. The first time you raised concerns, you presented evidence. Why not present yeah. evidence? Because after you raised those concerns, these he said, we're taking steps to correct these and Because this, because, because the first time we raised the mm. consents, the EC said it was just mere propaganda. It wasn't mm. true. Mm. So we needed to prove to the EC. Mm -hmm. So what we just gave was just a tip of the iceberg. So to prove, prove to, to the EC. So, so we've already provided the first one. Mm -hmm. You remember the second one, the EC asked that we should come and provide the evidence. Mm -hmm. We went there with the media and the EC said we're not ready to meet us with the media. We wanted the entire world to see the weight of the discrepancies, the weight of the abnormalities in the register. The EC was not ready. The mm -hmm. EC wasn't ready to meet us with the media, yet they want to meet us in closer. We said, we are not ready to meet you in closer because mm -hmm. the weight of the evidence, the discrepancies we have, mm -hmm. is so heavy that the entire register needs to be audited in a forensic manner. So that is why we still maintain our position that we need to have a forensic audit of the register. And the hypocrisy of Madame Jane is so pronounced and profound because just in 2014, 2015, Madame Jane Mensa, who was the IA. Uh, head of IA, mm. was calling for an independent audit of the register at the time, which was granted. But you remember at the time, even before being granted, yes. uh, uh, Charlotte, say you mentioned um, issues of cost and timelines. Don't you think this will also in incur extra costs? It's better to pay in terms of cost mm. to rectify a register mm. than to pay cost in the form of suffering if mm. a wrongful person is elected as president. Okay. So it's better for us to pay money so to you, clean you, up you the register than you, for us to pay with our lives in terms of suffering mm. when the wrong candidate is elected. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you can see that this entire system is being skewed to put the MPP back in power. Mm. And that will end up with you and I suffering. Mm. So it's better for us to use money now mm. to rectify a mistake than for you and I to use our lives mm. to suffer that mistake. Mm. So we are not ready to continue with this register. We are not ready mm. to adhere to the EC's demands. Mm. All we need is for us to sit and comprehensively audit this register. Mm. As simple as that, how if, difficult if, if, can if, it if be? If the, if the register is not audited, even after this memo demonstration, if it is not audited after 276 uh, petitions, would you partake in the election? It's not for I, as Deputy National Youth Organizer, mm. seated here solely to tell you whether or not we'll partake in the elections. Mm. Just as our national chairman and leader of the party, the mm -hmm. flag bearer, have already stated, mm -hmm. at every point or every step in the way, mm -hmm. People have asked, if this doesn't happen, what next? If exactly. this doesn't happen, what next? When we brought up the issue of the audit of the register, mm. people said, if, if the EC doesn't adhere to us, what are we going to do? Mm. Then we announced 16 demonstrations. Mm. So we've also announced that if they do not adhere to mm. this current 16 <laughs> demonstrations, they are going to receive 276 mm -hmm. petitions. Mm -hmm. So I'll beg of you, let's wait. After the 276, I hope it doesn't get to 276. But if it gets to 276, we'll also announce the next step. I would not want to take the wind out of the sail. But be rest assured, we are resilient, we are resolute, and we'll make sure we we'll fight to make sure the right thing is done and the right thing will be done. Madame Jane Mensa, in her own hypocritical way, mm -hmm. hip hypocritical way, cannot force us to be victims of her own mistakes or Machiavellian tactics to make sure that she skews this election in a certain direction for the MPP. We will not take that. We are not ready to take that. And we are not in a position to take that. That we shall not take. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this afternoon, I saw a post by the national organizer of the MPP and speaking on a sister station. He, he, very, he vehemently 
uh, let me say, critically alluded to that statement he posted on his Facebook page. And he said that the N people will fight and oppose any action that undermines the independence of the Electoral Commission. Then again, that is a great hypocrite. Or How let me so? say a greater hypocrite. How In so? 2016, mm. his own party, mm. his former boss, mm. when he was organizing the press conferences, he, Nana B, today, was part of those press conferences when they were calling for the auditing of the register. So I what has So what has changed? Yes, so what has changed? Mm. So please, let us not but, even but, be but attention but to, to says hypocrisy. The, the auditing of the register is uh, synonymous to the exhibition of the voters' register. No, the, as e the, 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 the exhibition of the register is entirely different from mm. the auditing of the register. Mm. Exhibition of the register clearly is for you and I, mm. with our voters' re uh, ID card, mm -hmm. to go into the register and find out, Osman Ayaga, is your name rightly it's, spelled it's, there? It's, it's no, it not the same? No, it's not the same. Okay. Osman Ayaga, is your name rightly spelled mm. there? Yes or no? Mm. Is your date of birth rightly written there? Yes or no? Mm. That is different from later having to find out on the day of voting if mm. i walk to boko central mm. where i vote to go and vote just to realize that my name has been transferred to ejumako mm. so the exhibition is an entirely different exercise the exhibition is just for you to go and make sure that the right particulars have been inputted there you know beyond the exhibition usually there's also transfer yes. so you see that is where the issue is so if after exhibition mm. i've gone to check and all my particulars are rightly inputted there mm. And on the day of transfer, because I know I'm not engaging in any transfer, I do not go there to even verify again. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, somebody sits in the comfort of his home, inputs my data, and transfers me to another constituency. What it means is that I'll wake up in is, the morning is, of is, seven, is, is this, travel is all the way. Is this it's not, it's, it has happened. Mm -hmm. It has happened. But, but, 3, but 3, you, 3, you, 3, you 3, brought 3, us to the attention of the EC. Yes. 3,795 names mm. have been deleted from the register mm -hmm. without their notice. Mm -hmm. So here's the case. You verified your name Could is in the register. Could that be that they did not go to uh, verify their details? That is why they, they are But all these, descript all these discrepancies mm. have been brought up even after the voter exhibition mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that the entire voter exhibition exercise we did was an exercise in futility. Mm -hmm. Because all these discrepancies that you are saying, but, that but all I'm, these discrepancies I'm sure you know a, a lot of Ghanaians did, not, did not go to verify. I'm sure you know that. A lot also went to verify. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have been able to identify most of these issues. So, because so, some so, people went to verify okay, please, and they realized that their names have been wrongfully uh, uh, inputted. Mm. Some too went to verify and they realized mm. that their names are actually not captured in the areas they decided to register. Mm. Then we decided to take pains time to be able to check one after the other mm. and realize that some names have been illegally transferred from one police station into another police the, station without the, their notice. Did these people go to verify their details prior? Yes, some went to verify their details okay, prior. Some, yes, okay. some went to verify their details prior. Mm. Like we had one case, I think there was one case, an issue of, I think the person was around Tesano. Mm. A classical example, mm. his name was there, but later when we went to verify, realized that they're actually taking his name off a Tesano register. Mm. So you realize that these discrepancies are just calculated to make sure that a good number of people from our calculation, mm. over 300,000 people to be disenfranchised on the day of elections. Mm. Some names deleted, some names wrongfully transferred so that you have your ID card, your name is in the register, but it is in the wrong location. Mm. Mm. So your name has not been deleted. So you realize that if we have, we ask for the total number in the register, mm. if it's maybe 10 million, they'll give us the same register, it's 10 million. The figure we have will be 10 million. So you see that the total figure are tallies. But what you will not see is that in that 10 million, 300,000 of them have been rearranged. One will say musical chess. Mm. So they remove you from here and they take you here. So your name is in the register, but it's not in the polling station that you expect to go and vote. Mm. At the end of the day, you'll be disenfranchised. Do you know what it means for 300,000 people on the day of election not being able to vote? That alone will be enough to sway the election in a certain direction mm. for a candidate. And we are not ready to be victims. Mm of some Machiavellian tactics by the EC to make sure she's able to skill victory for the MP. Mm. We will not. Mm. And that is why we are resisting. We will continue to resist it. If the EC wants to behave as though it's an extension of the MPP, we'll treat them as an extension of the MPP. And clearly that is what they are doing. And that is how we are going to treat them. Mm. And we will demand accountability so far as the register is concerned. We shall not relent. Mm. We shall not retreat. And we shall not surrender. Does the 
NDC have issues of trust with the Electoral Commission? Absolutely. Beca because uh, the, the chair was appointed by uh, the certain president. Not only the chair, you have former TESCOM patrons in there. You have former lecturers who, even in the comfort of their classrooms, we're talking about MPP, seated in there. You have the EC chair act in a way that we all believe is so glaring that mm -hmm. even the blind, if they could see on their face, they would see that she's been skewing the entire election towards the MP. So mm -hmm. we obviously do not trust the Electoral Commission. So we are going in there with our own Electoral Commission. When I say we are going in there with our own Electoral Commission, it means that we are going into this election prepared, knowing that the Electoral Commission is part of the MPP. And we are going in there prepared. And that is why we are making sure that everything in the step, everything along this entire chain is done properly and it should, must be done in an order of transparency, integrity and fairness. Okay, uh, I'll let you go but let, let, I want to take your, your, your thoughts on this. The next story I'm going to do is on a shooting incident in the Ashanti region. I'm sure you, you've learned of it. You mean today's Yes, today's uh, protest. Yes, um, I saw some videos of um, the protesters in Ashanti region. I think they wanted to go beyond a barricade and mm -hmm. there were issues. And uh, I think some pushed the barricade open just to go into the office of the Electoral Commission. I, I do not have the full details mm -hmm. as to what really mm -hmm. happened, whether the police attacked them or they attacked the, the, the police. The police says it did not, but when we spoke to our reporter and we understand there was a, there was a shooting incident. Yes, so I, I don't think a peaceful protest should degenerate into shooting. So shooting is a who shot who? Is it the police that shot or the protesters that shot at the police? Mm, mm. Which we do not know. Okay. But of course, we only expected the protest to be as peaceful as possible. Mm. But what we also need to understand, what the security service and the EC need to understand is that there's so much bottled up anger mm -hmm. in the citizenry. There's so much hunger and anger. So if people want to go out there and protest, allow them to go out and protest peacefully. Because just as they protest, they are able to unleash that anger in them. But if you, in a way, try to gag them, if in a way try to stifle that, 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 that unleash that they need to unleash, mm -hmm. then it may just generate into some chaos. But across the country, it has been generally peaceful. 16 no. demonstrations, if uh, all 16 were peaceful with just a, a bit of, you know, misunderstanding within the Ashanti region, mm. I think generally we need to congratulate the NDC and leadership for organizing such a peaceful protest. And the and security services as well. Yes, of course, and the security services as well. Mm. And of course, the media, you guys did a fantastic job. I Thank saw you. your reporter in mm. the crowd struggling mm -hmm. with his camera mm -hmm. left, right. I saw other media houses also struggling. Sometimes they get lost, they come back. Mm -hmm. The security men sometimes block them. Mm -hmm. They had to you know, identify themselves as a the media so that they were given some special treatment to be able to cover their um, news. So I want to congratulate them, congratulate you for being there for us. And uh, we hope that we don't have to do the 276 demonstrations. But if it gets there, we would love to see you there too. Absolutely. We'll be there when it gets there. Uh, that's Osman Ayaga. He's a, dep a deputy national youth organizer for the largest opposition party, the NDC.